Um, it is my honor to be here. I know you guys are missing Pastor Brad and Bethany. I don't know about you. I saw some pictures they posted, though, and it blessed my heart because they're refreshed. They're relaxed. Um, they've got an opportunity to get away, which we are so excited and blessed, but we're looking forward them, to them coming home. And, you know, the sun is here, so hopefully Bethany will be excited to be back in the sunshine here in Washington. Um, but it's such a joy for me whenever I get a chance to be here. And I was laughing. I don't spit when I talk that I know of, but nobody wants to sit in the front row. So, you know, <laughs> that's where the anointing is, people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we've been journeying through the book of Philippians uh, we're on the Contend series. We are actually getting very close to the end of Philippians here shortly. Um, but I don't know about you. I hope that every time you come or if you're listening online, if you miss the service, but that you roll around these things in your mind that you're being taught and you think on them, you meditate on them, you get in the word of God and you study it more and you allow it to change your life and to activate in your life. Because I know for me, I've been challenged, I've been changed every time the word comes forth here on a Sunday morning and just really stirred to contend, to contend for all these different things that we're being taught about in the word of God. Because don't we know that the word is alive and it is powerful, it is transforming and it is changing. It can change our attitudes, it can change our thoughts, it can change our hearts, it can change the words that come out of our mouth. And so we need to allow the word of God to change us and rearrange us. And that's my heart today. I don't want any of us to leave here with just head knowledge. I truly want God to use his word like he does to make a transformation in our life today. And that's my heart's desire even for myself. Um, you know, we can study and we can prepare. But I tell you what, the Holy Spirit's working on us just as much as you. Amen. And he is present here today. And so, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, God, for each and every person that has made it here this morning, saying, God, I want to meet with you. I want to meet with family. And, Father, for those that are tuning in online, I just pray, Father, for such a sweet anointing, Lord, that I would just be your mouthpiece this morning. That's my heart's desire, Father, is to bring you glory. And so, God, we just surrender this service to you. And, Father, I just ask that you would speak to each one so intimately and personally like only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. So there's an old saying by a Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu, who I'm sure most of you know this saying, but it says, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. And then Gandhi also, very similar to that, he is an Indian lawyer who led his country to freedom in 1947, but he says, your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values become your destiny. Your conduct, your character all begins in your mind. And even as Pastor Bra uh, Matt was saying earlier, right, like what are you envisioning in your mind? What are you thinking about in your mind? What are you rolling around in your mind? Because our actions are affected first by what we're thinking because that's where it starts. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. What's coming out of our mouths? Watch your words. They become your actions. It is so true. I'm in this dance class, and, and she was just saying, like, when you go to turn, you have to, like, your head has to go before your body goes, which is so true because if you're doing this whole spin on the dance floor, <laughs> if my head goes first, my body is going to follow there. If my thoughts are lined up, then my words and my actions are going to go there. And so what are we having on the inside that we're rolling around, and that's what we're thinking on. And so we're going to look at what the Word of God says about this in Philippians Continuing on from the amazing message last week that Pastor Carolyn got to bring us. But we're in Philippians 4, 8, and 9 this morning. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, 
whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Back to that peace that Pastor Carolyn touched on last week and what we have to do if we want that peace to come. Amen? Paul says, finally, finally, brothers. Okay, I'm almost done, but I'm not done yet. Listen up. Because here we go. I have a point to make, he's saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Whatever, these things, think on these things. What is true? What is lovely? What is honorable? What is just? What is commendable? What is of excellence? Who is true? Who is worthy? Who is just? Who is honorable? Jesus. Jesus encompasses all of these things. Jesus. Okay, yeah, but right now my marriage is crumbling. And so I'm going to sit there and think about how much my marriage is not crumbling. Let me clarify. <laughs> but you're, you might be in this season and you're, going to think, you're thinking on how miserable your spouse is and the things that they've said and done to hurt you. And, oh my, and you're just letting this snowball of negativity fill your mind because that's what you're thinking on. But what is true? Who is true? Jesus is true. Can he heal and restore any situation? Yes. Can he love the unlovable? Yes. So the love of God's on the inside of me. So maybe my husband might seem unlovable, but I'm going to love him with the love of God. So now I'm going to think about, God, that your love is shed abroad in my heart, that you forgive all mankind. You can restore all mankind. That means you can restore my marriage and what is broken. You're the healer of all things, and you can heal all things. So now I'm thinking on what's true. Now I've got the snowball rolling around in my head of things that are good and of God. And I'm telling you what, your faith will get stirred. We are called to be people of faith, to walk by faith and not by sight. That's how you build your faith is you get in the truth of God's word and that's what you meditate on and chew on and think about and roll around on the inside. I was telling someone this morning, I've had people come, oh, you just have a special measure of faith. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I wish I did. Amen? <laughs> Pastor Carolyn and I have had this discussion before. I have Jesus. I have his word. I have his truth. And that's what I'm going to choose to think on and meditate on. It doesn't matter how great of a season I might be in, like summer with the sun shining, or if I am in the middle of a tornado holding on in my life, God's word doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the great I am in any and every situation. Your situation is not anything new under the sun. And so we're going to choose to think on these things. The Amplified Bible says, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and plant them in your heart. The word think is actually an action verb. It's an action word. It means to reckon, to count, to compute, to calculate, to count over, to take into account, to weigh, to deliberate, to meditate, to consider, to determine, to purpose. And we just say, oh, I just think about it. No, this, you're really mulling this over. And so we have to choose what are we going to think on what is true, who is true? One who trains and disciplines and practices performs to the best of their ability. And I kind of had a laugh that Pastor Matt talked about track because I was thinking about track. And I was thinking about, I used to run track back in the day. That was a lot of years ago. Now, what I think on and envision is that I'm going to die, and it's miserable. And I literally, as he's saying that, I'm like, oh, I'm not really thinking on good things to even motivate myself to try running again. <laughs> because I'm thinking, I can't breathe, and somebody help me, and is this ever going to end? But it all starts in the mind. It really does. It doesn't matter if you play football. If you play lacrosse, if you're FFA. My daughter just did a speech last night. She had to think on what she was going to be talking about. She had to practice what she was going to be talking about, right? 
And it's the same thing in any area of our life. If you are an employee and you want to be the best employee, then you should be thinking on the things that you're taught so that you can be a good employee. And we need to train the younger generation to do those very things, to be an amazing employee, right? As you're an employee, your employer is paying you for you to make them look good. <laughs> Amen, all employers say. Um, <laughs> that's just a side note for those of you that are working for somebody. But we need to think about things because then our words are going to line up and we're going to speak them out. And then there's going to be action behind it. So we need to ready, set, go. Think, speak, act. Ready, set, go. We need to contend for our mindset. We need to make a decision in this place today. I am going to contend for my mindset. Mine, you are going to line up today with the word of God, with the truth of who God is and the truth of what God says. It doesn't matter what people have said about me. It doesn't matter what I've said about myself. It doesn't matter what I've read or what I've seen. I am going to contend for my mindset today. Can we determine that in here today? Do we want to, our mind to be aligned with the truth of who God is? Or do we want to be just living this chaotic world on the inside and continue in that? Because you get to choose. You get to make that decision. We have to get ready. We have to get set. And we get to go. Amen? We are in a race. We are in a race of life. So, yes, it lines up even with the track talk. Because God has set us on a race. First Corinthians talks about run so that you obtain the imperishable prize. Hebrews talks about run with endurance the race that is set before you. Lay aside those weights and sins that easily ensnare you and what? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Lay aside all those doubts and fear and unbelief and sin and all the junk that pulls you away from Jesus. Set your eyes on him. We have to get ready. Ready means to prepare ourselves. We need to get in preparation mode. What are we thinking about? To prepare our thinking. What are you listening to? Because I'm telling you what, there are so many voices out there. What are you listening to? God, I'm going to choose this day to listen to you. Oh, but I just spend all day watching the news. <laughs> okay, I, you know, news can be good, news can be bad. I don't watch it because it's a little depressing myself. But if that's all you listen to, you're probably going to have some depression in your life. But if you're listening to the word of God and what he says in relation to those situations... We know who wins in the end. We read the book. Jesus wins. So it might look like a hot mess. And thank you, Jesus, we have the authority and the power to pray. But God, I thank you that you, I know you win in the end. Maybe, maybe you're, you know, living your senior days, but when you were a young child, your parents spoke over you that you were worthless, that you were stupid, that you were all this stuff. And here it is decades later, and that's still rolling around on the inside. Is that what you're listening to? What are you watching? What are you watching? Are you watching God move? Are we spending eight hours a day watching social media, watching television, watching people around us that are falling apart? We spend more time being filled with everything around us, and we think, God, I can't even give you five minutes. I just don't have time. I've been there. I've felt that, and God's like, really? You got time. We always have time. It's how we prioritize our time. You want to get your mind set? Get into the word of God because that's where the truth is. That will triumph any fact that is going on in your life. What are we meditating on? Because those things that we're listening and we're watching, that's what we're going to be meditating on. That's what's rolling around on the inside. You know, I used to love, I mean, I still enjoy Hallmark, but I used to really love Hallmark. And back in the day, I grew up watching soap operas where my mom would, like, videotape it, and then we'd watch it together. Don't recommend that. 
but why do I always just want, you know, flower petals all along the hallway in the house and a bubble bath waiting for me? And, you know, can that happen? Yes. But is it realistic to be every single day of my life? Probably not. I mean, my husband's an amazing man. But we have the, we build these unrealistic expectations in our mind because of the things that we're listening to, watching, and meditating on. We need to meditate on the truth of God's word. We get to choose, choose this day what you're going to fill your minds with. Choose to think on things that are true and pure. True to think on things, choose to think on things that are pure and noble and just and of good report, that are honorable and excellence and worthy of praise. Choose this day to think on those things. Replace whatever the negative is with those things. Jesus, who are you? Oh, you're lovely. You're virtuous. Jesus, what does your word say about my situation? Because that's what I'm going to choose to think on today. I'm going to think on the truth of God's word. I'm going to think on the truth of God's promises. I'm going to think on the truth of who he is, what he has done, and the price that he has paid for me. Because he loves me. It doesn't matter what man has said about me. God loves me. Choose to think on those things. Romans 12.2 tells us, do not be conformed to this world. All those examples is conforming us to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have a job to do to renew our mind. Amen. You get saved and your, your spirit man is a new man in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But we get to work out our salvation in our mind and in our body. Amen. When you think about the armor of God, we were given the helmet of salvation. What does that protect? Our mind. If we remember to go back to the truth of what salvation is and the price that Jesus paid, Saved, healed, delivered, made whole, set free. Okay, this situation I'm dealing with. Saved, healed, delivered, made whole, set free. Huh. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have any of that in it right now. So God, I'm going to go to your word. Oh, wait. You're a father that's always present. You go before me. You surround me. You're my, oh my, you're always on my side. These are things that you figure out and you understand how great and how mighty and how awesome he is, how loving and how powerful he is, how just and how righteous he is, that he is for you, that he is not against you, that he will make a way where there seems to be no way. He'll get you over the mountain, under the mountain, through the mountain, around the mountain, blow the mountain up. He'll get you there. But you don't know that if you don't know Jesus. You don't know that if you don't know the word of God. That's why it says meditate on these things. Think about these things. Get them in your mind. Get them in your heart. Prepare yourself. Ready yourself. For any storm that comes, ready yourself. Why was Jesus sleeping in the boat in the middle of the storm? Because he knew who he was. Do we know that Jesus is in the boat with us? He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is for you. We need to choose what we're going to think on, and we need to refuse. As we're making that choice, what we're going to think on, we need to refuse to quit mulling over. We're not going to mull over those things anymore in our life. I'm going to lay it down this day. Colossians 3, 2 tells us, set your minds on things that are above not things that are on this earth. I'm going to refuse to allow my mind to continue to go there to that place of negativity, that place of anxiety, that place of depression. Yeah, Carrie, you just don't get it. I get it. Oh, I get it. There are many times every five seconds that I'm grabbing a hold of my mind and listen up, mind. We're going to listen to Jesus today. Just because I'm standing up here doesn't mean it's easier. Actually, it might mean that it's a little harder. (laughs) But I get it. But I'm going to choose to believe God over everything else going on. And over everything and every thought that keeps trying to whirl itself into my mind, I'm going to put the truth of God's word in there. And that's what I'm going to choose to think on, and I'm going to refuse to continue to think on those other things. 
Because again, where the head goes, the body follows. You get to make a choice today. We're told to take every thought captive to what? The obedience of Christ Jesus. That's what the word tells us in 2 Corinthians. Take every thought captive. You mean he's not going to take it captive for me? No. He already did all the work. He's already given you all the promises. He's saying you get to make that decision today to take those thoughts captive. We are bombarded every single day for things that fight for our thoughts, our time, our energy. So we get to choose and we get to refuse. Refuse anything else that's not lined up with the word of God. Those lies that have been spoken over you, the drama of social media, the enemy that is seeking to devour you. When your mind is engaged and set on Jesus, that's when you will feel the strength. When your mind is engaged and set on Jesus, Ready yourself. Prepare yourself. Think on the things that you're called to think on because that's where his strength comes from. If all we're eating is chocolate cake 24-7, we're not going to be very healthy in our vitamins or our weight or anything else, right? We have to make a decision. We have to choose to eat some healthy stuff. We have to choose to take our vitamins. We have to refuse to continue to just eat chocolate cake 24-7, which hopefully none of you do. Because you literally would die. It's the same thing spiritually. Choose what you're going to eat. Choose what you're going to think about. And meditate on and mull over. Choose and refuse those other things. Refuse the temptation to eat the chocolate cake all day long. Refuse the temptation to go back to those lies and ugliness that continues to bombard your mind. We're going to ready and we're going to set ourselves. Set is now to position ourselves. They the get into their little blocks when they're about to run a race and they're getting down there and like ready. They're envisioning this race and they're envisioning them winning. They're like, all right, get set. And they kind of lift their booties in the air at that moment. <laughs> get set. And their hearts are racing. Our, we're, we need to get set. We need to position our hearts now with the things that we've been meditating on. Position our heart and position our words to line up with those very things. Because you want your body to follow. It starts in your head and it's going to come out. Proverbs 18.21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. I want to eat life, not death. I don't know about you. I want those fresh, yummy cherries that they're going to be having out soon, not the rotten, nasty things with mold on them. Death and life are in the power of our tongue. Let's look over in Matthew 12, 33 through 37. We get to set and position ourselves. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You are a tree and there is some fruit. What is coming out of your mouth? You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word that they speak. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the mind, of things that you've been thinking on, the mouth is going to speak. Our heart is our soul, our mind, will, and our emotions. Out of the abundance of what we're putting in is what's going to come out. We have got to do a check. When the pressure's on, what are we saying? 
You can ask those around you if you're not really quite sure because they will let you know gladly. Is it woe is me, negative, complaining, weariness, anxiety, fear, threat? Is that all that people hear when they're around you? Are you the negative Nancy? Or is it life and hope and faith and trust? Because you could be walking through the same exact storm as somebody else. And I'm telling you what, one person, they could look defeated and like they're never going to make it. The other person, you're like, I want to get on your team. Because everything might look horrible, but you know that you're going somewhere. You know that this is going to change. You're going to stand on the promises of God no matter what. That's the kind of people I want to hook up with. Jesus people. And I'm telling you what, it's not going to be, oh, I just, I choose today. No, it is going to happen by making that choice, but by getting into the word, meditating on all these things that we've been contending for, this entire series, everything that's being taught to us, getting in and studying and allowing the word of God to speak to you. Aren't we so grateful that we don't have to go to a priest to speak to us? We get to go to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he will speak to you intimately and personally. You'll read the word of God and something will just ignite in your heart and go, yes, yes, I see that. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, I have no joy. I need joy, Lord. Because all of a sudden it stirs in your heart. Not this fake made up, ha, 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 laughy joy that's only temporary on your situation and circumstance. But the joy of the Lord that sustains you and holds you and keeps you and strengthens you. I can be weeping on the outside because of something sad, but there is this peace and joy on the inside that could never be taken away from me. Are we allowing God's word to transform us? Are we spending time thinking on these things, readying ourselves? Are we getting set positioning our mouths, the attitudes of our heart. Because once we do, it's go time. Ready, set, go. Go is to purposely move, to move forward, not to be at a standstill, to push ahead to go, ready, set, go. They take off on that track and they've got one thing in mind and that is the race that's set before them and that finish line. And Jesus has you on a race of life and there is a finish line when we get to go to the sweet by and by and be with Jesus in heaven, amen? And so we are running full force ahead. Not gonna get distracted. You know if a runner turns and looks at somebody else that's running, it slows them down. Keep your eyes set on the author and the finisher of your faith. Keep your eyes set on Jesus because you're not going to slow down. You're going to keep racing forward and you're going to keep doing the things that God's called you to do. And he's going to help you and strengthen you in every season that you encounter on this life. He's going to carry you when times are hard. But you're not going to know that if you don't know him like that. And I don't care how long, I've, I mean, I got saved at 19, so I've known him a while. Some of you have probably known him longer than I've even been alive. But we still get to know him every time we're in his word. I'm telling you, you can read the same scripture 55,000 times, and you read it again, and it sparks in your heart, and you're like, I have never seen that, and I have read this so many times. But you're not going to see it if you're not in there reading it. I just don't understand. I look at the Bible, and I think, oh, no, we don't see that. I do understand. I remember I started in Genesis and quit quickly. It's overwhelming. It's a big, and you're like, what what are they saying? Start in the New Testament. Start reading about who Jesus is and what he has done and the promises that he has made. Because I tell you, once you start getting a revelation and understanding of that, you go to the Old Testament, and it starts making more sense. It is the first book when I say start in the end and then move to the beginning because it actually makes sense. The Old Testament is there on purpose and for a reason. But if you don't really understand who Jesus is, you're not going to understand the Old Testament. It's not like it's just a novel like you read in school. This is a book of life. 
for us. And it's time for us to go, to purposefully move forward. Philippians 4.9 in our scripture today said, What you have learned and received and heard and seen, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Practice means to actually do it. Do these things. Jesus, what we have learned and received and heard and seen in Jesus, what we have learned and received and heard in, in our pastor as he's ministering the word of God. He is by far, none of us are perfected people, but as we endeavor to follow Jesus, let's go. Let's do it together. Iron sharpens iron. Let's learn from one another and grow with one another. We are supposed to practice these things, put them in to action it is time to go. It is time to move forward. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I don't know about you, but I want to be a doer. I don't want just head knowledge. I love studying. I could be a lifetime student, to be honest, because I really do love learning new things. I don't like tests because that stresses me out. But, <laughs> but I'm telling you what, we get to be a doer of this word. The things that we're learning, we get to be a doer of it. Are we ready? Are we set? And are we ready to go? Are we thinking? Are we speaking? Are we acting? Because I know in my life, there's areas that I was like, oh, okay, Lord, you're right. I just went on family vacation. Family is fabulous. But there are things that come up. And I'm always ready to come home here to my family. And then God's like, what were you thinking about? Were you on guard, waiting for the ball to drop? What was my mind thinking about? all the other hurts and things that were done in the past? Or was I choosing to say, God, let me be a light in the midst of other people's pain? Jesus, when I walk into a room, let me realize you're walking into that room with me, that I can be a vessel of hope to other people. What are the things that we are rolling over in our mind again and again and again? What are the lies that we've allowed to creep in? What is consuming our thoughts? What fears are causing you to retreat backwards? What opinions have you allowed that is now holding you back from the very places that God is telling you to go? Opinions that you even have of your own self. Maybe God put some in your heart years ago, but you have just felt like you're just not good enough. You, you're not capable enough. You don't have the money, the time, the energy, whatever it is. And it's holding you back because you're thinking on all of that instead of the fact that the creator of the heavens and the earth has called me. He will equip me. He will give me the wisdom I need. Yeah, but you don't understand the things that I've done, the choices that I've made. Jesus has called you. He knows every decision you've made and every choice that you've made, and it did not erase you out of his book. He still has called you. And we think we're bigger than him because we hold back and like, you just don't get it, God. He gets it. And there are some dreams and visions in your hearts that God has placed there. Some recently, but some for decades. And you've just sat on it. So now, today, choose. What are you going to think on? Ready yourself to believe his promises. Ready yourself to walk in the fullness of God. Set yourself. Start speaking it out in the name of Jesus by faith. I am going to walk into this area that God has called me to. I am I'm going to be bold and be able to proclaim and share my testimony. Maybe you just feel inadequate to share your own testimony. And you'll, you'll begin to adjust. And then you'll end up seeing that you're moving forward. You're not sitting stagnant. That there's actual movement. 
but we get so busy filling our lives and minds with so much stuff that we just feel like we don't even have the time or energy. Well, we're going to choose this day to get rid of things that we can get rid of that don't matter, that are wasting our time and energy. We're going to choose this day to get into God's word and to focus on what he has for us, to watch, to put a guard over our tongue and what comes out of our mouth that it would line up with the truth of God's word and it would bring hope and healing to others that are around us, that it would bring hope and healing to our own hearts and our own lives. Because that our, if we have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. That old saying, it's so true. Meditate on these things that are true and just and holy, noble, of good report, excellent and praiseworthy. Back to Philippians 8. That's what should be coming out of our mouths. Are we speaking that or are we speaking the facts and circumstances more? Do you feel like you've been stuck in certain places in your life? Intentionally, unintentionally, purposefully, you're stuck. God's saying it's time to move forward. It's time to go. He didn't call you to sit here on your booty all day long. It's time to go. It's time to do. It's time to walk it out. It's time to live in it. Live in the fullness of the Lord. I don't know about you. I don't want to wander in the desert for 40 years. Was God still there and did he still provide? Yes, he did. But I want to be the one that gets to go to the promised land because I'm going to take God at his word. I'm going to allow it to change me and transform me. Are we going to choose to do that today in this church? Because that's the choice we get to make here and now. And guess what? Where we falter, Father, forgive me. I'm going to get right back in the word, and I'm going to find out what your word says in this situation. And you're going to help me to stand strong in the midst of whatever storm's going on and rise above it. I want everybody to stand up. We will have our prayer workers up here, so if you want to come at the end and have someone agree with you. But we're going to take a moment, and we're going to have some time before Jesus as they go into worship for us this morning of just getting raw with the Lord. Oh, God, forgive me. Forgive me that I've allowed my mind to be focused on so many other things than you. Forgive me that my words are just spewing out junk and death and not life. Forgive me that I've been stagnant and not moving forward in my, that area of my life that you've called me to move forward in. It's a moment that we get to be with Jesus and say, God, I wanna renew my mind. I wanna think on these things that you're telling me to think on, that you're telling me to practice in every area of my life. Wherever I've shut the door and locked it with an area not allowing you in Jesus, today we're blowing the door open and we're saying, God, I want you to invade this space and come and do a work because no situation is beyond the hope of Jesus Christ. No situation. And so, Father, we just invite you in right now God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you have told us what things to think on, what things to meditate on, what things to practice. And Jesus, you encompass it all. Let our minds and our hearts be set on you, Lord Jesus. And the price that you have paid, the promises that you have made. Oh, Lord, forgive us when we've taken it in vain. Forgive us when we haven't trusted you, but we've trusted everyone around us more than you. God, you are a big God, and I've limited you and made you small. I don't want you to be small in my life anymore. You are a heavenly father. You are the king and the creator. You created the heavens and the earth and all that there is. You breathe life into my very lungs, Lord. Let us see who you are and realize the power that is made available to us as your dear, dear children. And so, God, as we enter into worship today, we just focus on you. Let our minds be rearranged in Jesus' name. We are going to contend for our mindset in this place.
Thank you in Jesus' mighty name.